Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture we looked at the properties of a positive semi definite matrix. So, we will now use all these ideas as we mentioned at the end of the last lecture. We should now use all the ideas that we have developed so far in this course to analyze a general given matrix. So, recall the properties of a positive semi definite matrix. One, all eigenvalues are real and this comes from the fact that a positive semi definite matrix is always Hermitian. The second point is that all eigenvalues are greater than or equal to 0 and this says that if nu a is the nullity of A and rho is the rank of A where A is positive definite, A is positive semi definite, then its eigenvalues can be arranged as in a decreasing order um, eigenvalue, then the next smaller eigenvalue and so on. These are all greater than 0, row of them are positive eigenvalues and the remaining are all there are new A of them, these are all 0 eigenvalues. And then corresponding to this, corresponding to this we have orthonormal eigenvectors, we have v 1, v 2, v rho corresponding to the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda rho the positive eigenvalues. So, we have the rho orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to the positive eigenvalues and then phi 1, phi 2, phi nu a corresponding to the eigenvalue 0. So, the eigenvectors can be found and we also found that v 1, v 2, v rho provide and orthonormal basis for the range of E. So, these are all the fundamental properties of a positive semi definite matrix. Now, we shall look at a general matrix and see how we are going to use these properties to analyze a general matrix. So, let us now start, start with the analysis of a general m by n matrix. Now, without loss of generality we shall look at A as a real m by n matrix and we will point out what are the minor changes that we have to make whenever we deal with a complex m by n matrix. So, first we will look at the real m by n matrices. Recall that corresponding to A we have four fundamental subspaces, two of them namely range of A transpose and the null space of A subspaces of R n and the range of A and the null space of A transpose 
subspaces of Rm. And these pairs are orthogonal complements of each other. orthogonal complements of each other. What this means is we have the space R n A maps vectors n component vectors to m component vectors and A transpose take m component vectors to n component vectors and this space is in this space we have these two orthogonal complements this is the range of A transpose, this is the null space of A. On this side we have the two orthogonal complements the range of A and the null space of A. The fundamental problem is choosing suitable basis for this. Notice that the dimension of this is the dimension of the null space of uh, dimension of the range of A transpose which is the rank of A transpose which is the same as the rank we will denote the rank of the matrix by rho. Similarly, the dimension here is the nullity here the dimension is again the rank here the dimension is the dimension nullity of A transpose. So, these are all the dimensions of these four spaces the two spaces the range A transpose and the range A are the same dimension namely the rank of the matrix null space of A dimension nu A the null space of A transpose is the nullity of new A transpose. So, the basic problem is to choose orthonormal basis for these four subspaces. In a suitable manner which makes the analysis of the matrix A easy. We shall see the meanings of the word suitable, easy etcetera as we go along. This is the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is to choose the subspaces these four fundamental subspaces we have got them. So, we have split the two vector spaces R n and R m into two parts each. Now, in each part we are going to do the sampling namely get the basis when we get the basis we want it always to be orthonormal. So, the computations become easy and we want to choose this basis in such a way that it makes our computations and analysis easy. So, it is for this purpose of choosing the suitable basis of suitable of suitable basis choosing we use the ideas we use the ideas of positive semi definite matrix. How do we do this? That is the question. So, what we do is even though the matrix given matrix may be rectangular or it may be square, we do not know whether it is Hermitian, it may or it may not be Hermitian, it may or may not be positive semi definite. What we will do is starting with the given matrix A, we shall construct another matrix which is positive semi definite in such a way the analysis of the positive semi definite matrix that we construct will reflect in the analysis of the given matrix A. So, given A in R M N we construct a positive semi definite matrix which we will call as L which is n cross n such that the analysis 
of L reflects in the analysis of L. Now, the analysis of L will be easy because it is positive semi definite and we have seen all the properties of positive semi definite matrices. Now, how do we define this matrix L? So, we define L to be A transpose A. Notice A is M by N and A transpose is N by M. So, the product is N by N. So, L belongs to N by N. So, first property of L is that L belongs to N cross M. So, L is an N cross N matrix. So, even though the matrix original matrix A may not be rectangular, we have construct may be rectangular and may not be square, we still constructed a square matrix out of it which is L and which is an N by N square matrix. Okay. So, the moment we have a square matrix, we look at its properties now. The second property that we look at is the following. Suppose x belongs to R n, then we have L x comma x is equal to a transpose a x comma x which is equal to a x comma a x. Remember when you move a transpose to the second factor it will go with the another transpose. So, it will become a transpose transpose which is a which is equal to the length of a x squared which is greater than or equal to 0. So, therefore, a x comma I am sorry therefore, L x comma x is greater than or equal to 0 for every x in R. This is precisely the meaning of the fact or this is precisely saying that L is a positive semi definite matrix. So, L is a positive semi definite matrix belonging to R n. So, given an n by m by n matrix, we can always construct a positive semi definite matrix which is n by m. Analogously, we can define m to be a a transpose and this is a, a positive semi definite matrix in R M M. So, given the rectangular M by N matrix, we have constructed two positive semi definite matrices, one of them is N by N, the other one is M by M. We shall study the properties of L, analogously, we will get the properties of M. Now, given L, what does it do? This is now we have constructed this L. Now, take this matrix L. What does this do? It is an n by n matrix. So, it maps it takes R n vectors to R n vectors. Now, what is L transpose? Since it is positive definite it we, we make sure that it is symmetric and by very definition we see that L transpose is equal to L and therefore, L is symmetric real symmetry. Okay. So, L transpose is L. So, it is a symmetric matrix. So, L transpose also maps R n to R n. Okay. So, the reverse map R n to R n L transpose is the same as L. So, that we do not get anything new. Now, corresponding to L, we must have a decomposition of R n. Remember that the moment we have a matrix, we have the subspaces. What are the subspaces for L? The subspaces of L are 1 range of L, 
null space of L, then we have to say range of L transpose, but L transpose is L, so that is the same as this, so nothing new. Similarly, L transpose is L, therefore null space of L transpose is the same as null space of L. So, there are two basic subspaces of Rn namely the range of L and the null space of L. So, these are the two subspaces we get actually I will write R L transpose which is equal to R L. We know that the null space of any matrix is orthogonal complement of the range of L trans or the transpose, but in this case the transpose is the original matrix therefore, the null space of L is the orthogonal complement of the null space of L. Or similarly, we get for the matrix M on this side the decomposition because it is an M by N matrix it decomposes R M by R M both the space sides are the same it is the range of m transpose which is the same as m everything and this is the null space of m transpose which is the same as null space of m. So, we have one decomposition of R n given by L and one give decomposition of R m given by m. So, now if you look at R n and R m we have the decomposition on this side given by the range of L and the null space of L and the decomposition into orthogonal complements on this side given by range of M and the null space of M. On the other hand A also gives a decomposition on the other hand we have R n and R m we have the decomposition given by A which is range of A transpose and null space of A on this side and range of A range of A and null space of A transpose on this side. Now, let us look at these two pairs of decomposition and focus on R n first. On the R n side we have one decomposition given by L namely R L and N L also another decomposition given by A namely R A transpose and N A. So, on for R N we have two orthogonal complement decompositions one of them is the range of L and N L the null space of L given by L and the other is the range of A transpose and the null space of A given by A. So, we have these two decompositions of the same space one arising out of the matrix L and the other arising out of the matrix A but the matrix L is connected with the matrix A because it is defined from the matrix A starting from the matrix A we defined L as A transpose A. So, we expect there must be some connection between this two decomposition. So, is there any connection between these two decompositions. We shall now investigate this question. So, to do this to look at this we shall first look at some properties of the null space of L and the range of and the range of L. So, we shall now look at the null space and the range of L. So, first the null space of L. Suppose we have a vector x which is the null space of L. Remember L is a n by n matrix. So, the null space of L is a part of 
R n. So, x is in R n. So, x belongs to R n and x belongs to null space of L implies L x since x is n by n x is n by 1 L is n by n L x also belongs to R n and since it is in the null space it must be the 0 vector of that space. So, L x is equal to theta n if L x is equal to theta n that says L x comma x the inner product of L x with x is the same as the inner product of theta n with x which is 0. So, that says A transpose A x comma x is 0 because L is defined to be A transpose A. Now, in an inner product if you move the A's from one side to the other side it gets added up with a transpose. So, if you move it to the second factor it becomes A transpose transpose that is it becomes A x A x is equal to 0 that says the length of A x squared is 0. Now, note that A is an m by n matrix x is an n by 1 vector. So, A x is a vector in R m its length is 0 and therefore, A x must be the 0 vector of the R m space which means x is in the null space of A. So, what we have seen is that whenever you have a vector in the null space of L it must also be in the null space of A. So, therefore, null space of L is contained in null space of A. So, we have started first looking at some connection between these two pieces the null spaces of L and A and the range of L and A, A transpose. So, this is the first property let us call it as 1. On the other hand x belongs to null space of A implies A x since A is m by n and x is n by 1 that is the 0 vector in the m space. Now, if I multiply both sides by A transpose I get A transpose theta m which is a is transpose is n by m this is m by 1. So, it will be the 0 vector of the n space. So, that says L x is theta n because A transpose A is L. So, that says x is in the null space of L. So, consequently we have the null space of A is part of null space of L because anything in the null space of A is also in the null space of L compare 1 and 2 we get we get null space of L is the same as the null space of A. So, now if you look at this picture the two decompositions on the R n side this and this are the same. If these two are the same their corresponding orthogonal complements must be same. So, basically these two decompositions collapse into the same decomposition. So, we shall now put this together. So, we have the null space of L is equal to null space of A. Consequently, we have the range of A range of L is the same as range of L transpose but for any matrix the range of the transpose is the orthogonal complement of the null space, but the null space of L transpose is the same as null space of L perpendicular because L is symmetric real symmetric L transpose is equal to L. This is what we have used here this is what we use here because L transpose is equal to L and because L transpose is equal to L. Now, n l perp is the same as n a perp because we have just seen that n l is the same as n a, but n a perp is the range of a transpose perp. So, therefore, hence we get range of l is the same as range of a transpose perp.
So, hence the decomposition of R n into orthogonal complements given by given by L and A are the same. So, we have this picture on the R n side we have we call it null space of A it is the same as null space of L and we have the range of A transpose which is the same as the range of L. Consequently, we get dimension of N L is the same as dimension of N A, but the dimension of N L is the nullity of L and the dimension of N A is the nullity of A. So, nullity of L is the same of nullity of A. Similarly, because R A transpose is equal to R A R L, we have dimension of the range of A transpose is the dimension of the range of L. The dimension of the range of A transpose is the rank of A transpose and this is the rank of L, but the rank of A which we denote by rho A transpose, but the rank of A transpose is the same as the rank of A which we have seen. So, the rank of A is equal to the rank of L. So, the L has the same rank as A and same nullity as A. So, what are the conclusions that we have? The nullity of A is the nullity of L, the rank of L or the rank of A is equal to rank of L is also equal to rank of A transpose. So, these are the properties that the fact that the decomposition given by the A and the by given by L of R n is the same. Analogously on the decomposition of R m we have on the R m side we have the null space the range of A which will be the same as range of m now. Remember m is A A transpose and the null space of A transpose will be the same as null space of m. So, putting all these pictures together we have R n R m the two spaces A goes this side A transpose goes this side and on the R n side we have the decomposition range of A transpose which is the same as range of L, null space of A transpose which is the same as null space of null space of A which is the same as null space of L. On this side we have the range of A which is the same as range of M and null space of A transpose which is the same as null space of M. Again you looking at the right hand side we see that the dimension of the null space of A transpose is the same as the dimension of the null space of M which gives us the nullity of A transpose is equal to nullity of M. Similarly, if you look at the decomposition of the RM we get dimension of range of A is the same as dimension of range of M this is the rank of A which is the same as rank of M. So, we have seen that the rank of A is the same as rank of L which is the same as rank of A transpose. So, we therefore, have the following situations the nullity of A is nullity of L the nullity of A transpose is equal to the nullity of M the rank of A is the same as rank of A transpose with the same of rank of L the same of rank of M. All these matrices A, A transpose L and M 
share the same rank whereas the nullities will depend on a and a transpose so, l will have the same nullity as a and m will have the same nullity of a transpose okay, these are the four fundamental relations the relation between the subspaces is described in this picture the range of a transpose is the same of range of l null space of a is the same as null space of l the range of a is the same as range of m the null space of a transpose is the same as null space of m these give rise to the following relationship between the nullities and the ranks of these various matrices the important thing to note is that a a transpose l m all share the same rank that number associated with the matrix this is a very important number now let us see how we are going to exploit to find the basis for the four subspaces now so how do we use this to find orthonormal basis for these four spaces that is the main question now let's look at first the null space of a same as null space of l but l is positive semi definite and therefore null space of l basis orthonormal is given by the orthonormal eigen vectors let's call them phi 1 phi 2 the nullity is nu a is the same as nu l so instead of writing nu l we will write nu a note big note nu a equal to nu l orthonormal eigen vectors corresponding to eigen value 0 <coughs> recall that we have seen that the null space basis for a positive semi definite matrix correspond to the eigen vector sub 0 so we can find the orthonormal basis for na through the positive semi definite matrix l and from its eigen vectors corresponding to the eigen value 0 we can find the orthonormal basis for the null space of a so we have finished one fourth of our job namely finding the eigen uh, uh, orthonormal basis for na we are able to get similarly we look at na transpose orthonormal basis corresponds to the orthonormal eigen vectors corresponding to the eigen value 0 of the matrix m because here we should write here it was l of the matrix l so we have now we have now seen out of these four subspaces the this the null space part here can be found out from the zero eigen vector of l and the null space part on this side can be found out from the zero vector correspond uh, zero eigen value corresponding to the matrix m so let us denote this basis by psi1 psi2 and you will have nu a transpose vectors because nu a transpose is equal to nu m so now we have this picture again let's keep on writing this picture until we complete this whole thing with a basis we have rn we have rm we have a going this way a transpose going this way and this is the null space of a which is the same as null space of l now we have found a basis for this and then this is the null space of a transpose which is the same as null space of m we have found a basis for 
this. So, now our job is to find the basis for these two fellows. This is the range of A transpose which is the range of L, this is the range of A which is the range of M. So, these are the two things that we have to find. Now, let us look at the range of A transpose which is the same as the range of L. Now, L is positive semi definite, its positive eigenvalues can be arranged as lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2 and how many of them will be there that will exactly be the rank of the matrix A. We will not write rho sub A because rho sub A is the same as rho sub A transpose the same as rho L is the same as rho M. Since all of them share the same rank we will not distinguish and simply write all these are the eigenvalues greater than 0 and the 0 eigenvalue has been taken care of here in finding the null space. And we get we know that corresponding to the positive eigenvalues we get orthonormal eigenvectors. When we analyzed positive semi definite matrices we found that corresponding to the positive eigenvalues we get orthonormal eigenvectors v1 corresponding to lambda 1, v2 corresponding to lambda 2, v rho corresponding to lambda rho. So, we found that at the end of the last lecture we found that the v1, v2, v rho which are the orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to the positive eigenvalues of a positive semi definite matrix give rise to a basis for the range of that positive semi definite matrix. So, we found that v1, v2, v rho provide an orthonormal basis for range of L because L is positive semi definite. But range of L is the same as range of A transpose. So, now we have the better picture which is progressing well in the sense that we had R n, we have R m and A goes this way and A transpose goes this way and we have the range of A transpose which is the same as the range of L and we have the null space of A which is the same as null space of L and for this we found the basis this comes from the eigenvalue 0 of L and now we found the orthonormal basis V1, V2, V rho which come from the positive eigenvalues L and the corresponding orthonormal eigenvectors. And on this side we had the null space of A transpose which is the same as null space of M. We found orthonormal basis which corresponds to the 0 eigenvalue of M and the eigenvectors orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to the 0 eigenvalues of M. Now, the only thing that remains is finding an orthonormal basis for the range of A or the range of M. Now, we will show a clever method of choosing this in order that this is where the cleverness of choosing the basis comes. We will choose the basis for the range of A in such a way that from then on our analysis becomes easy. Now, how do we choose this basis? So, we have now the last part is to choose an orthonormal basis for range of A which is the same as range of L. Once we choose that we have the 4 subspaces, 4 orthogonal subspaces 2 on one side and 2 on the other side we have the orthonormal basis for them and then we shall analyze everything in terms of this orthonormal basis. Okay. Now, we have v 1, v 2, v rho orthonormal basis 
for range of A transpose which is the same as range of L and these are orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to the positive eigenvalues lambda 1 greater than equal to lambda 2 greater than equal to lambda rho of L and therefore hence L of Vj is equal to lambda j Vj for j equal to 1, 2 up to rho. Let us call this equation as 1. So, we have this rho eigenvectors of L which form an orthonormal basis for the range of A transpose. Now, we define, we look at what happens to Vj under A. So, look at A Vj. Now, Vj is in Rn, so it is n by 1, A is m by n, so that belongs to R. So, certainly this is a vector in R m. Secondly, it is of the form A of something, so it belongs to the range of A. So, A V J are all in range of A, J equal to 1, 2 rho. Any vector of the form A of some vector must be in the range of A. So, these vectors are A V J. So, if we define W J equal to a v j j equal to 1 2 rho then w j all belong to range of a. So, we have captured some vectors in the range of a rho of them are there if you are lucky they will themselves form a basis for the range of a and if you are very lucky they may even form an orthonormal basis for the range of a. Now, let us see whether they do this. Now, will W j form a basis for range of A? Will W j form an orthonormal basis for range of A? If so, our search for the basis for the range of A is over. So, let us look at W j. So, we look at this W G. We have W J comma W R the inner product of W J with W R. W J by definition was A V J. W j is a v j. Similarly, w r is a v r. So, therefore, w j w r inner product is the same as a v j a v r inner product. Once again, we observe that in the real matrix case, when we move the matrix from the inner product from one factor to another factor, it goes with a transpose. So, it becomes a transpose a v r. Now, a transpose a by definition is L. So, that is L v r. Now, recall that this v 1, v 2, v r are eigenvectors corresponding to the positive eigenvalues and therefore, L v r will be equal to lambda r v r. So, this will be equal to v j lambda r v r. Now, when we pull out a constant lambda r from the second factor of the inner product everything is real the eigenvalues are all real because positive semi definite. So, we can pull it out as v j comma v r. So, w j comma w r is the same as lambda r times v j comma v r, but these v 1, v 2, v j are orthonormal and therefore, v j v r will be equal to 
0 if j is not equal to r and 1 if j equal to r. So, therefore, this will be 0 if j is not equal to r and when j equal to r v j v r is 1 because every vector has length 1 and multiplied by lambda r. So, it is equal to lambda r if j equal to r but lambda r or lambda j whichever way you want to write. So, therefore, this fact says w j and w, w 1, w 2, w rho are orthogonal to each other. If you take any two of them, any two of them they are orthogonal, but they do not have length 1. So, what this says is is that w 1, w 2, w rho are orthogonal to each other and the length of each one of them is equal to squared is lambda j because w j w j is lambda j in our calculation put r equal to j you get w j w j and that is equal to lambda j. So, w length of w j squared is lambda j. If you have a set of orthogonal vectors and if we divide each one of them by its corresponding length we automatically get an orthonormal set of vectors. So, now we define u j to be equal to w j by its length its length is w j by lambda j square root because the length of j squared w j squared is lambda j. So, the length of w j is square root of lambda j. Now, recall that this lambdas are the positive eigenvalue that we are talking about and therefore, there is no problem about taking the, uh, the square root of positive quantities. Now, the question is which square root we take as a convention we take the non-negative or the positive square root. So, where we take positive square root of lambda. We have to take the positive square root because we want it to be the length of w j. So, now we denote by s j square root of lambda j and these are called the singular values of a. The s 1, s 2, s rho or call the singular values of u. So, now what do we have? We have u j therefore, is w j by s j then u 1, u 2, u rho are orthonormal vectors in range of a, but range of a has dimension rho. So, if you have a rho dimensional space and you have rho orthonormal vectors that means, they form an orthonormal basis form an orthonormal basis for range of e. So, we also got an orthonormal basis for range of e. Note we have u j is equal to w j by s j by w j by definition was a v j and therefore, we get a v j is equal to s j u j for j equal to 1 2 rho. On the other hand we have u j belongs to R m Therefore, we can take A transpose u j, A transpose u j is the same as A transpose A v j by s j because u j is A v j by s j. Now, A transpose A is L v j, A transpose A is L. So, A transpose A v j is L v j. 
but v j is an eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value. So, it is lambda v j by s j, but s j is square root of lambda j. So, it is just square root of lambda j v j because s j is equal to square root of lambda j, but that is the same as s j v j. So, therefore, we have a transpose u j is s j v j. So, what is the structure now? So, we have this R n, we have the m dimensional space, A is a mapping from R n to R m, A transpose takes R m vectors to R n, we have the subspaces here range of A transpose which is the same as range of L null space of A which is the same as null space of L. We have the orthonormal basis V1, V2, Vro. We have the orthonormal basis phi 1, phi 2, phi nu U. And then we have on this side the range of A which is same as range of M null space of A transpose which is the same as null space of M. We have the orthonormal basis u1, u2, u rho and psi1, psi2, psi nu a transpose. And the fundamental relation is that a v j is s j u j and a transpose u j is s j v j. What this means is that the basis vector v1 here, the basis vector v1 on this side goes to the same direction as the basis vector u1 with the scaling factor s1 because a v j has the scaling factor s j. So, v1 goes to the u1 direction with the scaling factor s j v2 goes to the u2 direction with the scaling factor s2 and v rho goes to the u rho direction with the scaling factor s rho. So, basis directions are matched to basis directions except that there is a certain dilation taking place in each one of these basis directions. So, v j is put to the u j direction with a scaling s j v1 is put to the u1 direction with the scaling s1, v2 is put to the u2 direction with the scaling s2 and so on. So, this is for j equal to 1, 2 up to rho. This connection between these, so now we have constructed a basis for the range of a transpose and the range of a in such a way that the basis directions are connected. That is the first basis vector goes to the same as the direction of the first basis vector on R m side. Second basis vector of range of A transpose go to the same direction as the second basis of the range of A and so on and so forth. So, the direct the basis gets mapped to basis except there is a scaling factor. So, in order to get the orthonormalization we had to do this scaling factor. So, thus we have using the positive definiteness of the matrices L and M we are constructed, we have been able to get the orthonormal basis for these four subspaces. Now, all of them come out as the eigenvectors as the orthonormal eigenvectors corresponding to the positive semi definite matrix L on this side and the positive semi definite matrix on the M on that side. So, all the computations therefore, are reduced to the computations of a positive semi definite matrix and therefore, whether the given matrix is rectangular or square, whether it is even if it is square, whether it is Hermitian or not, we can always construct a positive definite matrices, semi definite matrices L and M starting from the given matrix A from which we can construct the orthonormal basis for all the four subspaces that we want and the orthonormal basis for the range of A transpose and the range of A are constructed in such a way they are linked to each other. The moment we know 
the orthonormal basis v1 v2 v rho for the range of a transpose we can extract the orthonormal basis u1 u2 u rho from this relation a v j equal to s j u j. So, thus we have chosen certain basis in a in a connected manner and we shall now see how we are going to use all these bases to analyze a given matrix. As a feel for it the idea is we are trying to solve a system of equation A x equal to B. The vector B lies on the R m side since it lies on the R m side that is a known vector it lies on the R m side it can be expanded in terms of the orthonormal basis u1 u2 u rho psi1 psi2 nu a transpose. The unknown vector x we are trying to find out lies on this side and therefore, it can be expanded in terms of this orthonormal basis v1 v2 v rho so and psi1 psi2. So, we will make that observation we have v1 v2 v rho phi 1 phi 2 phi nu a is an orthonormal basis for the space R n and u 1 u 2 u rho psi 1 psi 2 psi nu a transpose is an orthonormal basis for R m and the fundamental relation is A u j is equal to S j v j and A, A v j is equal to S j u j and A transpose u j is equal to S j v j for one less than or equal to j less than or equal to rho s j is equal to square root of lambda j the lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda rho or the positive eigenvalues of l. Now, we shall see how we use these four bases to analyze a given general matrix and this analysis will begin in the next lecture.